Method. On this episode of the Stavro Method podcast, I have the pleasure of interviewing my good friend and entrepreneur, Willie Crawford. Willie, thanks for joining me today for this interview. I appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule to share some great information on opportunities available to our audience. It's my pleasure, George. I look forward to uh, enlightening your audience. Oh, this will be a fantastic uh, webinar. I've been looking forward to it for a while. So for those of you that uh, don't know about my good friend, Willie, here's some background on him. Uh, he's managed to lift himself up from extreme poverty and has accomplished many great things, both offline and online. So basically, Willie grew up in extreme poverty, raised by his grandmother on a farm in North Carolina. And he first began working at the age of eight when a neighbor asked his grandmother if she thought he could help out with the tobacco harvest. And she replied, I don't know, let's see. And Willie has basically worked nonstop ever since, and even once held three part-time jobs while being a full-time college student. Having good grades in high school, he was accepted to and attended North Carolina State University, where he was also commissioned a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force upon graduation. His career as a C-130 navigator took him to 60 plus countries where he also dabbled in 19 different languages and took part in seven different wars or conflicts other than war, AKA insurgency operations. Six years before retiring, Willie decided to start his own part-time business. And since he needed something that he could work as he flew all over the globe, he turned to the internet. By the time Willie retired in 2003, he had already done numerous things in the internet marketing space, including having created several information products and having both spoken at and hosted his own seminar. Like many ADHD entrepreneurs, Willie has subsequently tried and sometimes succeeded at numerous things. Today, he focuses on selling his own goods and services as an affiliate marketer, builds, ranks, and rents lead generation websites for mostly brick and mortar businesses, helps business owners locate or obtain funding for all kinds of projects, teaches others his methods of ranking and renting websites through a course that he created, and lately, his focus on helping small business owners to recover money being paid up by the U.S. government as part of a COVID-19 relief effort. Willie told me about the program, the ERC, or Employee Retention Credit, pointing out how I could earn some nice commissions while helping to spread the word. And so I invited him on to this interview to help to explain the program to you. Willie, thanks again for sharing this great opportunity with others. And let's get started. So what is Absolutely. the ERC? I'm looking forward to it, George. I, I'm, and I'll be referring to my notes in case the people notice me looking down. I, I don't, at my age, I don't totally depend on my memory. I'm a trained platform speaker, and even there, you know, I use notes or I use slides, actually, you know. Oh, and I'll be doing the same as well. And so, Willie, so uh, can you go into details? Like, what is the ERC? Yes, the, the ERC, uh, that's the Employee Retention Credit. And as you know, uh, when, when COVID-19 rolled in, a lot of countries just shut down. And uh, so the U.S. was one of those countries that sort of ordered uh, people to stay at home. And during the lockdown, a lot of businesses uh, were on the verge of failing. And uh, the government decided to uh, offer money through what they call the CARES Act to uh, uh, reward businesses for not shutting down. At first, it was uh, a loan to the business owners. And then the government decided to make it a grant. and uh, that. Uh, CARES Act had two parts to it. One was the um, the ERC and the other was the Paycheck Protection Plan. Uh, the, the ERC um, gives business owners up to $26,000 per W-2 employee that they had on the books back in 2020 or 2021. And uh, so it's a, a refund of the payroll taxes that they paid uh, mm -hmm. to have to keep those employees around, uh, but it had to be real employees. It couldn't be uh, independent contractors. It had to be someone who who was issued a W two, uh, which they the business sent, both gave to the employee and sent to the IRS, as opposed to a uh, W nine, which they give to independent contractors. I see. Okay, and can you go into detail about what is the CARES Act? Yes, the, the CARES Act that that uh, CARES the C A R E S stands for Coronavirus Aid relief and economic security act and it was an act again to help uh, employers out who didn't fire or lay off employees uh because laying off is about the same as firing you know saying we're going to call you back when we open back up you know so the government said okay 
business owners, you're, you know, you're spending all this money, so we're going to give you a break, you know, since we're forcing you to shut down, basically. And mm -hmm. uh, so the CARES Act had uh, two parts to it. Uh, again, it was the uh, the PPC and the ERC. But it was it's money the government gave people to keep their businesses open. Okay, so it's similar to the PP and PPP in some ways, or I guess there's some differences as well, correct? Yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's a little complicated because the uh, legislation was first, you know, cranked out in uh, early 2020, and uh, it, it had a lot of stipulations as to which businesses could collect under the Paycheck Protection Program, and, and uh, that same legislation had the ERC in it, but most uh, professional tax advisors and accountants advised the, the business owners to go with the PPP because it was a lot simpler to file for. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had to choose one or the other. Uh, in uh, December of 2020, Congress looked at the, the legislation and decided to uh, allow businesses to file for both pieces, both uh, programs. And so that's what's different now. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of business owners now hear about the ERC, and, or they will hear about it through you and I, and mm -hmm. uh, they'll say, well, my accountant told me I didn't qualify for it. Well, their, their accountants don't know about the changes, or some do, but the, the laws are so complex mm -hmm. that uh, they don't want to deal with it. So uh, that's that's a good thing for us, actually, because we have uh, a team of, uh, I think there's about 70 people on our team, uh, of people that work in the office, the company that we, we work with, and mm -hmm. uh, they are experts at, uh, at filing the proper paperwork. Uh, okay. They've you know done it so often. Uh, they've uh, recovered about one point five billion dollars thus far out of the what I understand is about four hundred billion dollars that's available still in that fund. So uh, the 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 uh, uh, CPAs and advisors don't want to deal with a lot of the paperwork, and so we step in and help the business owners to recover the money that's still there. But it, you know, it's, uh, it's complex enough that I don't really try to explain all of the provisions of the uh, the law, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and the tax laws change on a regular basis. And, you know, I appreciate you being uh, transparent about this. It's just like so many things to stay on top of. So that's why it's great to have a team such as this in place as well. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what types of businesses can individuals approach with this great opportunity? It's uh, any business that had at least two W-2 employees on the books, other than the business owner or uh, the business owner's family. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of business owners will form a corporation or whatever, and then make themselves an employee of the corporation. Well, they don't count uh, in this case. They have to have at least two employees on the books who were not family members or them. And they can have up to 500 employees on the book. They can collect up to uh, that amount of money. So, uh, so again, it's... Uh, up, it's up to $26,000 per W-2 employee that they mm -hmm. had on the books for 2020 and or 2021, and they could have up to 500 employees. So if uh, we go out and we, I say, hit the jackpot, that is, mm -hmm. we find that company that had uh, the max of 500 employees, and those 500 mm -hmm. employees all met all the requirements mm -hmm. uh, to to they they pay basically, basically the company paid at least twenty six thousand dollars in payroll taxes on each of those employees. So you, that company is entitled to twenty six thousand dollars per employee times five hundred employees, which comes out to thirteen million dollars. Wow! And you and I, uh, as brokers, we would get a commission of two percent. Two percent of thirteen million dollars is two hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars, which is pretty powerful. You know, so, you know, this is, this is, uh, it got my attention. You know, most businesses we approach aren't going to have 500 employees, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, again, I say, if you hit the jackpot, you, you get $260,000 for basically making an email introduction, an email or and or a text introduction to our project manager. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's still a great opportunity, like, you know, regardless, like, you know, what size companies that you go after, it's just a matter of tapping into the resources that you have available and, make the most of that. So as far as like, you know, hitting the jackpot, like, would you say that happens often? No, it, it doesn't. Uh, my uh, project manager and I were talking, he told me that the average company, average size company that we we uh, 
land, they end up getting about $300,000 back. And so the broker, the person who referred the business to us uh, or to the company would earn 2% on that 300,000, which is uh, $6,000. And we have a two tier program actually. So uh, I would actually get some money off of that too. I'll explain that later though. Uh, but the, the average again is, is about, uh, 300,000. So, you know, again, a $6,000 commission just for making an introduction is not bad. You know, you could do mm -hmm. that in like 10 minutes, you know, just, I don't know, you're standing in line at the supermarket and the guy behind you runs a business yeah. and you just start to track up a casual conversation or you do whatever. And, uh, you know, you, you get that, you could end up with a $6,000 check in that five minutes standing in line at the supermarket, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the opportunities are definitely out there and, you know, 6,000 for just doing a warm intro, it's not bad there. Couldn't complain about that. So no. I recommend contacting these business owners in the first place. Uh, I do it a, a number of ways. Um, my, my The easiest way and the way we recommend, first of all, you do it is by uh, going with your warm contacts. You know, your dentist who probably has a bunch of people on staff, uh, your, your doctor, your lawyer probably has a bunch of assistants on staff. And, you know, I walk through my neighborhood uh, walking my dog, uh, walking walk with people walking their dogs and uh, I stopped to talk to one person who's a general contractor he works for a company that has like 60 employees I asked for a business card and uh you know so it, it's anybody and everybody that owns a uh, a business I personally reach out using um social media so any of my Facebook or LinkedIn contacts you know I look at their profiles and if they own a the business I'll ask them you know have you filed for the uh the ERC yet, and they'll ask, "What's that?" And uh, I explain, and uh, they either say yes or no if they're interested, mm -hmm. and they want to know more information. Uh, that's an easy connection. I also use uh, emails. I, I have my own newsletters, and so I mentioned the program in my newsletters, a little advertised, a little blurb there. Um, I send out uh, physical mailings. Uh, you and I are familiar with that. Send out cards. Well, I, I have a, a database of just business owners I've known for a long time, but I also purchased a couple of databases. Um, there's a, I'm, I'm a member of a, an organization called ITEX, which you're also in. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, a guy there, there's lots of guys there who are list brokers, but mm -hmm. I reached out to one and he sold me a list of every restaurant in the U.S. Uh, wow. And, and that database tells me not only the standard contact information, but also uh, the number of employees and their annual earnings and what type of restaurant it is. So I, I will, uh, you know, in my spare time, just every day, send a couple of uh, greeting cards to this business owner. And the thing with greeting cards is unlike emails, which may get may hit a, a spam folder, mm -hmm. spam filter, uh, the, the, you know, this is going to at least get through. And if you address the business owner, he's probably going to open it and look at it, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's a way to actually get through to the business owner, whether or not he throws it in the trash afterwards is a, uh, up for discussion. But uh, I have a plan with, with send out cards where it's like uh, $97 a month for me to send an unlimited number of cards. So what have I got to lose? You know, uh, oh, postage exactly. in the U.S. is 60 cents per uh, per letter, first class letter. So I I can send out like um, well, the, the company that send out cards has a fair use policy, which says you can't send more than 25 over on the plan. I use a $97 a month plan. You can't send more than 25 a day without them saying, whoa, you know, you're sort of abusing the system. But yeah. 25 times, you know, third, a 30 day period is like over 750 cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, the, you know, the postage on that is like almost $500, you know, so I get away like a bandit there. And yeah. so it's very easy for me to reach out to people. It, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying, Willie, it's also a, a matter of being smart about that as well. And it's interesting that you mentioned like, you know, the whole, like, you know, sending out a physical, uh, cards compared to email like years ago before the email was popular emails would stand out because they're kind of few and far between right they were so bombarded with it the physical cards stand out you know so it's just how things kind of changed over the years we're going back to just the so-called uh old time approach yeah, yeah i'm i'm a uh, 
I've studied direct mail and, and marketing for years. And, uh, you know, I, if I wanted to get really creative, I could use something like Luffy Mail, where you, you, know, you put something in the package. It could be something as simple as an envelope or mm -hmm. you could mail a package with a shoe in it that says I couldn't get my foot in the door in the other way or something that was clever yeah, like that. Up. Um, but basically, I just reach out to my connections. You know, uh, we all have we know a lot of people online. I mean, uh, in, in so, on social media, you know, we we call them friends, and some people have like me five thousand on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But I actually, you know, look at the people's profiles and the ones who own businesses. I just talk to that. We're, we're not expected to do anything more than just talk to the individuals and then hand them off to. Uh, the trained professionals, uh, the project manager that I work with, and when I introduce you to, he worked as a professional salesman for many, many years with uh, Tony Robbins. And so he's uh, he's masterful at what he does. Uh, so it's better to let him explain things than for me to try to ex remember all the provisions of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I did dig into it because, uh, well, I, uh, I dug into it because I was skeptical at first, you know? Yeah. And so I wanted to make sure I wasn't wasting my time on something that was not a scam. And so I, I dug into it. Yeah. It's not just like, you know, uh, respecting your time. It's also like, you know, the time of the referrals out there. Right. So very selective about products and services that you do recommend. And if you don't stand behind it, it just, it's like, you know, you don't want to put yourself in that kind of compromising situation. Right, right. And, and you know, you owe it to the people that you talk to. Uh, and, and a lot of this is... Uh, it's built on trust, you know. Uh, our uh, uh, project manager, uh, what he does is he, when I do an email introduction, I, I do an email and text with business owners. When yeah. I do that, he reaches out to them and uh, he gives them his calendar and he says, uh, you know, pick a time on my calendar and he says, yeah. probably won't take more than 10 or 15 minutes to just get, get a bit of information. But what he's getting from the business owner is, uh, their tax uh, filings paperwork. So mm -hmm. they've got to trust me enough to trust the company that I'm handing them off to. And uh, mm -hmm. then, you know, he takes that data and files an amended tax return mm -hmm. for the uh, the business. He files a IRS form 941, which we don't need to explain, but, no. uh, you know, the, when the business files its taxes, that that the payroll portion of the tax paperwork they have to file. So we're filing an amendment to that for them to get the rebate, basically. Very nice. And Willie, since you told me about the opportunity to be a broker, um, do you want to share with our audience why you did that? Well, I did it for two reasons. You know, first, uh, we're friends. And and uh, I know that I knew that you were uh, looking for ways to make a little extra money. Uh, we all are, you know, especially with the uh, uh, looming recession and all this other stuff, you know, and 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 money being currency being devalued because we're printing so much around the world too. And yeah. so uh, a lot of us will need the extra income. And so I, I thought this was the perfect uh, opportunity to get, you know, with the average person, uh, average business owner getting back $300,000 and that's a $6,000 check. That's more than many people earn in a month or two or three months, even in some places. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was something that was good for you, but selfishly, um, whenever I refer a broker, that broker gets 2%. Mm -hmm. I, as the, ref the one who referred that broker, I get one half percent of what the broker gets. I, I get one half percent of what the business collects. Mm -hmm. So on that business that collects, the average business that collects $300,000, the broker, you that I referred, would get uh, 2% or 6000 and I, as referring referrer of you, would mm -hmm. get one half percent of what the business collected, which would be $1,500. So I Is thought to myself, why, yeah, why not build an uh, army of uh, sub-affiliates, if you want to call them that, and uh, each time one of those persons makes a refers a business and that business, you know, gets back that average of $300,000. That's a $1,500 check rolling in to me. We're mm -hmm. doing nothing more than getting you to sign up as a broker, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it just makes perfect sense. And at the same time, I realize that most people, when they sign up for any kind of a business, they, they do very little. And so I look for self-starters, you know, the go-getters. I, I, it does no good to build a team of 100 people. I don't want 100. I want like 10 or 20 that actually do something. 
I yeah. got to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I personally, uh, coming from a military background, you probably will see my flag box in the, the background here. Uh, yeah. that, that's what I got upon retiring from the Air Force. Um, I was trained as a leader. And so I personally plan on giving my, uh, the people I recruit, some guidance, you know, what's working uh, and, and helping you really in any way that I can, because when you succeed, I succeed. And because I'm trained as a leader to motivate people, I had thousands of people under my command uh, at one time and was responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars at one time. Yeah, uh, yeah of government money, not my money. Uh, mm. But uh, so, so I, you know, I'm, tr I'm used to, I'm, I'm a trained leader, basically. Yeah. Well, and you're very giving and generous of your time. And it's like, you know, whenever I reach out to you for anything, you know, you know, you're right there for me. And I know that I can count on you as well as the, the rest of the people watching this podcast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, when you succeed, I succeed. And, uh, you know, we, and, and the business wins. I mean, we, we want these business owners that some are struggling. Uh, this money that they get back on the ERC, the government doesn't have any provisions as to what they do with the money. Uh, mm -hmm. The business owner could just keep the money or yeah. a nice business owner. If I would give my employees, you know, a bit of it back, so let's say it was payroll taxes, but you don't have to, you know, the business owner can do whatever they want with it. We, but we just help them to get the money back, you know, and yeah. some may be out on the verge of closing down and that this is a lifesaver for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, a lot of businesses have suffered with the whole COVID situation the past, I guess, two and some odd years. So it's just yeah. it's crazy, like, you'll the impact that it's had like and we just didn't know like how long it would go on for or the severity of or anything um willie a question for you so how long would this short-term u.s government program be available uh it's another 18 to 24 months uh and this, this is just an estimate uh the, the law is sort of vague but if a business uh gets their paperwork in within we think 24 months uh, if the program shuts down, their paperwork is still in the system. And then how quickly they collect really depends on uh, how fast the Internal Revenue Service works. They, they're they going to review all the paperwork, and uh, they're the ones that ultimately ultimately make the decision as to how much a business gets back uh, based on their rules and things like that. So they look at the paperwork, uh, make a decision, the business gets their money, and then when the business gets their money, we get paid. Gotcha. Okay. And do we face a lot of competition with this type of opportunity? Uh, there are uh, several companies out there, businesses out there that notice the the uh, provision and set up uh, different kinds of programs. Uh, and when I first heard about the ERC, uh, I was, again, I was skeptical. And so I, I first of all went to Google and looked to see what was being said about ERC. And uh, saw that there were lots of people talking about it, and and I went over to the IRS website and uh, checked it out there. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who's an enrolled agent with the IRS, which means she gets to go and argue cases before the the, the tax courts. So uh, I we talked about it, and uh, you know verified the legitimacy of the program. Yeah. And then I looked around at okay, so what companies are are uh, doing this you know and, mm -hmm. I, and i looked at what their staffs were like what the expertise of their staffs were like and i actually talked to a couple of friends who are with other companies and they all complained about the the slowness of, of the other companies just in processing the paperwork oh it's unfortunate yeah well one talked about a company that basically lost the paperwork but she wasn't sure where certain refunds were and so this company uh that we're dealing with they are they are and still they were and still are a payroll processing firm and have been for I understand decades and yeah. they have a huge staff of professionals and mm -hmm. they have tax experts on staff and so I you know have had a very good feeling about this company and I looked at the compensation too mm -hmm. uh, because the way it works is there's there's absolutely no charge up front to a business to be e evaluated yeah. Uh, but when the business does collect the money, the business does owe a percentage to the firm we're working with. That's how the firm stays in business. And mm -hmm. then we get a check from the firm out of that percentage they collect. So, uh, you know, I had to look at how much the company was paying us and compare that to, to other businesses too. 
And uh, I went with what I thought was the best. You know, if I would have felt there was another one that was better, I mm -hmm. probably would have gone with that one, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Well, the thing is, you're always presented with opportunities, like, you know, to promote different products and services. And it's like, you know, I know there's lots of people approaching on a regular basis. So, like, you, know, you definitely do your homework with things like this. So, if somebody wants to come on board as a, a broker, how much time does it take? It's you, you, uh, you sign a broker agreement that we send over to you. You know, the way the process works is uh, I ask you if you want to be a broker or you ask them if they'll be a broker. If they say yes, you introduce them to a project manager via uh, an email. And mm -hmm. the project manager sends them two, two things. He sends uh, an email that's a welcome email that has suggested ways of promoting the program to either yeah. get business owners or to recruit other brokers. Mm -hmm. And uh the brokers can put as, as much or as little time as they want into it. Uh, yeah. I personally, since I'm in my 60s and thinking about working very little very soon uh, and just enjoying the, the fruits of my labor, because, again, I, I started working when I was eight years old. So, uh, And Billy, I'm going to jump in politely. So with you working very little, I know what your schedule is like. And, you know, you're very disciplined as far as planning out, you know, your days, weeks and months in advance. So even like when you start to slow down, I think your slow speed is still faster than some people's fast speed. Well, it's yeah, I I, I, uh, I I posted out in social media, uh, I don't know, six months ago, I said I get more done in, in uh, the first six hours of a day than a lot of people get done in a month. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it is because I am disciplined. You know, I, I don't look at my cell phone until I've done certain things. I shut off my... Uh, the ringer on my phone so people can't even call me at times and then i really focus on things well and you're and, very uh, proactive and like you're know, even just arranging this call it's like you know because some people will do it like you'll know, maybe a couple of days before and we've had this in our calendar for about a good part of a week or something saying it's like okay well what's the best day for the most part that works for you it's like okay let's go sunday in and around like you know, early afternoon and the moment that like you know, we reach out to one another, it's like good it's there it's done and let's just move on rather than hemming and hawing and then like you schedule something an hour from now life gets in the way so just jump on opportunities while they're in front of us right and, and a lot of people uh, are just extremely poor at time management although mm -hmm. you you don't really manage time you manage yourself <laughs> because you, we can't control time but uh, to get back to your question of how much time does it take uh i know people who you know may put in two hours a week and i put in I put I try to put about two hours a day into it because again I use uh, the send out card system to send physical greeting cards and I compose individual cards to send to these business owners. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, if I and it stands I, out from everything else that like you know, that they're being bartered with for sure. Well, if, if I if I come across them on like Facebook, I may grab their picture off of Facebook and put it on the card. You know, mm -hmm. so it it instantly makes that card special they're not going to throw it away if it's got their picture on it you know and so on mm -hmm. so you know so I, I do put in more time than many people but then that means people are going to the, the prospect that i'm approaching the business owner is going to take me more seriously you know yeah. it says this person actually researched my business you know you well, did yeah. do a mass broadcast or whatever well and the thing is like you, know, you got to be able to differentiate yourself because so many times like you'll, you'll see an email come out there to whom it may concern i have all this going on blah 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 it's like you don't know a thing about me. Like, I'll give an example. Some of you will like, you know, approach me about, you know, work on website design or something. It's like, okay. And they don't even mention the website or anything along those lines. It's just generic. Oh, yeah. And it's a blind carbon copy email. It's not even like, you know, personalized. And like, use a person's email, like, use their name in it. Like, I like what you've done. Here's what could be better. And go from there. So you definitely take a, a different approach that stands out from a, a lot of others that are out there for sure. And one of my pet peeves is spelling people's names correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, in certain countries, Willie is spelled with a Y, and I spell my mine with an IE. Yeah. So, you know, it's like someone approaches you about something and they spell your name wrong. Uh, you know, that's a definite turnoff. For I, I would I would imagine it is for a business owner. And uh, you know, it's like you don't even know me, or or maybe not even close to getting the name right. Like you know, if it's a little bit of a difference, like, okay, like, you know, maybe an autocorrect type of thing happened or something like that, but somewhere they're just way off. It's like, if someone's approached me and like, you know, they spell my name J-O-R-J, -J, it's like, I'm sorry, I'll just delete it right away. Yeah. So, so it, 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 you know, it's people want to know that you 
honestly care about them and their business. And, and the only way to do that actually is to honestly care about them and their business. You know, mm-hmm. I understand the small business owner who uh, is struggling just to, to keep the doors of their business open. And a lot of them, uh, I used to be in a business networking group and uh, we all sat around talking about the challenges they face. They're, mm-hmm. If they're running a brick and mortar business, they're worrying about the employees stealing from them. They're worried about the uh, customers stealing from them. They're worried about the suppliers overcharging them or exactly. stealing from them. Others. Yeah. The uh, banks are asking them, how, how's business going? And if they say, great, uh, then the bank won't lend them money. If they say, well, not so good, then the bank tighten down the credit available to them when they need it most, you know? So, so I understand small business owners and uh, because mm-hmm. I do, I can relate to them and they can sense that, you know, we, we're electromagnetic creatures, you know, we can sense when somebody really cares about you. Oh yeah. I definitely go with the gut feeling. It's like, you know, you're very genuine with your approach and like, you know, you're just a go-giver. It's like, you know, that's something we both learned from our uh, mutual friend, Bob Burke. Yeah. And it's like, you know, to help people out there and it comes back to you like in one form or another uh well you know you definitely covered a lot of information so is there anything else that you want to discuss about this well i I did forget to mention that while this is a a u.s government program a a person from any country can become a broker Mm -hmm. Uh, and when uh the project manager sends over the broker agreement uh, yeah. and, and you read it over, it's got a place in there to ask for your, your social security number. The person outside of the U.S. would just put N.A. or all zeros or whatever. And we don't really care about that per se. Uh, yeah. It You know, it, it's just, just just to keep the paperwork proper. But so when you're looking at building a team, what I thought to myself is there are a lot of, uh, you know, influential people, influencers or, or go-getters. Yeah. from lots of countries that know lots of American business owners. You know, I think of some friends in some place like Dubai that uh, I've talked with regularly. And so those people make perfect uh, brokers for you to recruit. And so that's mm-hmm. why I mentioned you can recruit brokers from anywhere and uh, th- they get the same training. Uh, we-, we do have twice a week training calls, but yeah. the training calls uh, are a project manager jumping on a phone and we all call into one conference number and he, he'll mute us typically uh, because people don't mute their own phones and have things going on in the background. So he'll mute us and he'll explain the program to the new brokers. So yeah. you only really need to attend one of those these calls and, mm-hmm. and uh, he'll explain the program and then he takes any questions. Uh, now I've been on several yeah. because people ask different questions and he also covers what people are actually doing now, what industries they are approaching people in and having tremendous success, you know, with. So uh, that's why I tune into several calls. And and even, even though I'm not asked, sometimes throw my opinion out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think you do have such an extensive business background. You can relate to people in so many different areas. Um, will you let go? Our time's are starting to run up a little bit over here. So I'm thinking, how about we wrap things up, if that's okay with you? That's okay. I, I think that if people have any additional questions, uh, they can they can ask us. You know, you and I are both plan on sharing this uh, with our audiences. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to post it on on my website, and um, I have a podcast too. And mm-hmm. uh, and, and underneath the uh, the video where I share it, I'll post uh, links uh, for them to to reach out to us. You know, so that these uh, resources we mentioned. Uh, you know, they, they, they'll be able to, you know, just click on a link or copy. And I, I typically even give out my phone number, although that results in a lot of uh, spam uh, mm-hmm. or, or telemarketers, you know, calling me. So uh, if I'm not mm-hmm. expecting a call, I don't pick up sometimes. I look who's calling first. And I give up my email. Uh, G- Gmail is very good at filtering spam. So I check my spam folder before deleting. But I, I, give, I make it very easy for people to contact me. Um, I'm not hiding from anyone. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I think it's, it's a good idea to wrap it up and uh, that way we can uh, get this uh, distributed to the world. Exactly. Really yeah. quickly. Okay, well, you know what? I'd like to thank you once again for covering this incredible opportunity today. Um, I'm very excited about helping businesses and employees get them board with us in the ERC program. So I'd like to thank you once again for joining us for this episode of the Stavro Method Podcast. And until next time, everyone.